So I've been growing hydroponic strawberries now outside and inside for years. Uh, I think we're going on eight or nine years. I've found quite a few different things that work out well and quite a few things that don't work. So I'm going to go through building a strawberry tower. I'm putting a new one on the deck this year. You can follow along and we'll take you through step by step how to build your own strawberry tower and get great results with it. As you can see from these results, these things go right up until the water just freezes out and they're still producing right till the end of your season. You'll need some kind of a vertical stacker to do this and what you are looking for is specifically one that's going to drain from every uh, stack down to the stack below it and that way you can pick up the water at the bottom, run it back to your reservoir and pump it back up. Now there's two different ways you can do the reservoir. On the first example, uh, this one I ran in a previous place uh, that I owned, I've got a reservoir right underneath and there's a valve at the bottom that you can drain this thing off and replenish the fluid. Uh, the way that I decided to do it this time around is a little bit different. This one I actually plumbed right into the deck. Yes, there's holes through one of my deck boards. They are sealed off completely. And if I do all of a sudden decide I don't want this thing on my deck anymore, I can just replace one deck board and it's not the end of the world. I like the way that it looks on the top right now and it puts all the plumbing and stuff underneath. So I've actually done two different stackers here. There's a small stacker and there's a, a larger uh, pot holder stacker. I will leave links to each of them down below. You don't have to do what I did here and make this massive tower. You can choose either one or the other. If it's your first time getting into it, I'd urge you to probably go that way instead of making something bigger. What I will say though is the reservoir is kind of important if you're new to hydroponics. Choose a larger reservoir because it makes it a little bit more user friendly when you're starting out. Uh, just as far as controlling pH and ppm in the water. The smaller stacker that I listed below fits a half inch PVC pipe right in the middle. And what I did is I used the connectors to actually kind of hold that whole stack together. Put one on either end. It's just a slip coupler. And then I'm using Rainbird for the drip irrigation along with a Vivo Sun Pump. I highly recommend both the products that I listed there, the Vivo Sun Pump and the Rainbird drip irrigation. I found them the most reliable for hydroponics. What I will say though is I also urge you to put a paint strainer bag around that Vivo Sun pump before you stick it into your reservoir. This will just help any particulates or anything like that stop from going back up into the tower and plugging those Rainbird drippers. This way they're reliable the entire season. Don't worry about taking these pump indoors either. This pump that you see here was outside all winter in minus up to like 40 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. It doesn't matter here. They actually line up. Uh, anyway, just make sure your reservoir is totally empty if you do overwinter your pumps outside so that they don't freeze up and crack and damage and they'll still work for you the next season. So just drain your reservoir at the end of the season. One word I will say about these Vivo Sun Pumps is you do have to pay attention to head height as well. In my case here specifically, that barrel has to be at least a minimum of, of uh, like 5 eighths full. If it's not that full or fuller, it's not going to uh, have enough head height to pump up to the top of my tower. So kind of keep that in mind as well. You do have to kind of pay attention to head height. If you want to know what the head height is for your pump, just connect a straight piece of tubing onto it, run it straight up, and kind of just see where that water level uh, goes to on your pipe. So about the only thing that you need at the bottom is something as a catch basin that's going to take that fluid, catch it, and just let a gravity feed back into your reservoir. This is a plus where you're using the pail style of setup. That whole reservoir is just going to catch anything that's going to go right down through the bottom. I've decided to use two gallon per hour drippers here and I'm not sure exactly what the duration of watering is going to need to be. It always changes and it changes based on the temperature outside but we'll kind of go over that in future videos. One thing I will say is make sure that you don't use any pressure treated lumber. I did that the one year. I made kind of a top where it would sit on out of pressure treated lumber and I should have thought better. But the, anyway, the chemicals leached back into the reservoir and ended up killing off the whole tower. So plastics only and you don't have to worry about pH uh, messing everything around.
If it gets really windy in your area, they're going to want to tip over if you don't have some kind of an anchor. Optionally, you can also connect a string or something to the top, the very top, and then anchor it to your deck or something close by just to prevent that whole stack from tipping over if it gets super windy. As far as a variety of strawberry plants, I strongly recommend the Seascape. I find they do very well in hydroponics and they produce through the entire season. Uh, growing media, there's two things you can use, either hydrodon or perlite. If you decide to follow along and you need support or you need questions answered about this specific uh, strawberry tower and this setup, I will leave a link off to the side of another video of me putting the media in and getting my plants set up and started and kind of how I set the irrigation timer. For